Hey, hi everybody. This is Rich Wiegand from ProSoccerTactics.com. This is the day after a game, uh, that, a very big game between Borussia Dortmund and Wolfsburg over the weekend. Bundesliga match. Rather controversial call was made by the referee, Jurgen Stark, in the 35th, 36th minute. What happened was uh, Weidenfeller, the goalie from Dortmund, went out to make a save. And uh, he got stranded off to the side of the goal, and nobody was protecting the goal. The, the ball had bounced back to the top of the penalty area, and a Wolfsburg player was there, an attacker, you know, picked up the loose ball and shot the ball on goal. Marcel Schmelzer, the left back for Borussia Dortmund, uh, retreated and covered the goal for Weidenfeller, and in doing so, he actually stopped the shot with a combination of his left high thigh and his right thigh area, and near the groin area. And the controversy was that, you know, did Schmelzer place his hand in front of the ball to stop it, from, prevent it from going into the goal? First of all, the shot, when a shot goes towards the groin area of a player, your instinct is to cover your private parts to protect yourself, which is what Schmelzer was doing. Uh, but a close video replay analysis, you know, the commentators said this, everybody saw this, even the officials saw this after the game, they acknowledged that the ball had never touched Schmelzer's left hand. Um, so he was, you know, Borussia Dortmund and Schmelzer were unjustly punished for a foul they didn't really commit. Not only did Dortmund suffer the PK, which was converted, uh, by Wolfsburg um, to tie the game, but also uh, Dortmund had to play with only 10 men for the remainder of the game. So for the rest of the game, Wolfsburg had this man advantage. Um, so it was a very harsh decision. And looking back at it from a video replay perspective, you can clearly see once again that Schmelzer did not, in fact, touch the ball with his hand, even though it was like it was a matter of centimeters. The interesting comments that were made after the match, however, Jurgen Stark, the referee, as well as the DFB, the, which is the German Football Federation, both apologized to Dortmund for making an incorrect call because the video replays repeatedly show that clearly show that there was no handball made by Schmelzer. The the statements that were made by by Jurgen Stark after the match uh, were as follows and this is uh, translated into English from German. I looked at it again later and unfortunately it was an error of perception on my part. I'm sorry that should not happen. The penalty and the red card were a mistake on my part. That's annoying. This explains why later on in the second half Stark Stark actually tried to compensate for his earlier mistake by giving Dortmund what was clearly a fake drop in the box by Lewandowski in the second half. Uh, the Wolfsburg defender, Kier is his name, a blonde guy, and he plays the center back position, was marking Lewandowski and approached him as the ball was played to Lewandowski in the area. Lewandowski actually fabricated a drop in the box and, of course, Dortmund is granted the PK because Jurgen Stark feels like he wants to compensate Dortmund for making an error earlier in the match. So Dortmund converts the PK to make it 2-2. Two two. Eventually, Wolfsburg does score a final goal uh, to win the match 3-2. And there's the open question as to whether you know that had something to do with the fact that they were playing a man short for the remainder of the game after Schmelzer's uh, supposed handball. And it also prompts the question, you know, when a referee is in a situation like this and he makes one mistake, he tries to make up for it later in the game, the question arises, do two wrongs make a right? And he, a referee never wants to be in that position where he has to compensate, make compensations for previous errors. And believe me, it's not like referees don't make mistakes. I, as a referee and a coach, player, fan, uh, you know, I'll acknowledge, I'm the first one to acknowledge that I do make mistakes occasionally. To use Jurgen Stark's own words, it's a matter of perception. He was very close to the play, and this is one of the interesting points of this call. You, here you have a world-class referee. You know, Jurgen Stark has refereed World Cup matches. He's also uh, refereed Champions League matches. He's a very experienced referee. He's a top-notch referee. And he's standing like seven meters away from Schmelzer, in view of Schmelzer. It's not like he was somewhere else in the park. He was he had a very good view of the of the play. The shot that was taken on goal, which Schmelzer was trying to defend against, this this happened so fast 
that what Stark is trying to say here is that, you know, things happen so fast that he could not see whether or not his hand, in fact, touched the ball or not. Top-notch referee, perfect position, no obstruction, he can see the play perfectly, and he still makes the wrong call. Not only did Jurgen Stark acknowledge his mistake, but the DFB, as I mentioned earlier, apologized to Dortmund, too, and, and what they did was they rescinded the uh, game suspension for uh, Schmelzer because after a player gets a red card in the Bundesliga, you know, that player may have to sit out one, two, three, four matches, several matches sometimes, depending on the degree of the foul, of the harshness of the foul um, that was committed or the violation, or if it's misconduct, then it may be several game suspension. Well, in this case, the DFB rescinded the game suspensions for Schmelzer because they acknowledged that they, made, they had made a mistake. The point I'm trying to make here is that, that, that Jurgen Stark, both the referee and the DFB, apologized for making an incorrect decision. Well, then the, then the question arises, well, how did they know that they made the wrong decision? How did they know that the call was incorrect? Well, the answer, once again, is video replays. You know, you go back to the video replays, you see it from multiple angles, you check out the details, you scope in with the zooming in and, and, and out using technology, digital technology, and you can tell, you can then make the right decision in the end. It's only because of video replays that the DFB and Jurgen Stark could make that assertion that they got it wrong. That's a very important point I'm trying to make here. Could this be that they're, in fact, telling the world that it's high time that we started to integrate video replays? That's, that's the key point this weekend, that, you know, the German Football Federation and it, one of its top referees is saying, we made, we made an error, we don't like this, okay? We don't like living with this, having to live with the mistake that we made. Perhaps we should start integrating video replays. I think that is the message of the weekend from an official standpoint. Until we start to actually integrate video replays, we're going to continue to have to live through these mini tragedies of bad calls. How many World Cups have you watched? How many Champions League matches have you watched where your team or another team or just the team you are admiring suffers an injustice because there was no video integration, no video replay integration? It's, it's almost inevitable. And if you look at some of the professional, other professional sports growing up in America, I can, I can tell you that we, you know, I grew up watching so many different types of sports on TV and going to matches and watching and really admiring some of the advances that other leagues have made to try to make an effort to get the calls right. In particular, you can take a look at, for instance, the American Football League, the NFL, the National Football League, which is uh, the derivation of rugby game in America, where the NFL has, you know, due to some very bad decisions that have been made in the past, decided to finally integrate video technology. On my website, you can see pictures of how the officials on the NFL uh, fields take a break from the game, you know, and then you can show commercials if you want, you know, in the meantime, while the officials review the tapes, review the replays, and, you know, in an effort to get it right. Again, in NHL, in the NHL, in Canada and America, North America, the top hockey league of the world decided to integrate video replays. Now, hockey, ice hockey is one of the fastest sports in the game. The pucks travel at, at plus 100 miles an hour, and, um, you know, there's sometimes no way the human eye can see the, can make the correct de decision. Um, hockey is even faster than soccer. Because of the speed of the action, you know, these three referees that are skating up and down the ice, you know, they finally decided, hey, you know, we can't see this all. We need the help of some cameras here. And so the NHL has integrated cameras, video replays, into their decision-making process. And they actually stopped the game and they review the play until the play is, you know. I once watched a playoff series in the semifinals of the NHL, the Stanley Cup, between the Calgary Flames and Chicago Blackhawks, where there was a questionable decision as to whether the puck had crossed the goal line or not. And the referees were not sure. They let the play actually go on uh, for almost two and a half minutes. And I was like you know, waiting for the stoppage in the play to see what the video replays were going to be. They actually let the play continue until there was a stoppage. And then once the stoppage occurred, 
they went back to the video replays, studied the tapes, and concluded that the that that the, the puck had gone in and it was a goal. So what they actually did is they erased the two and a half minutes that were played after the goal, they as if it had never happened, they dropped the puck from center ice and they they restarted the game from the point where the goal had occurred. That's an incredible demonstration of how a league is making, it's trying its very, very best to provide the most objective decisions for the players, the coaches, the teams, the fans. Uh, and we, and shamefully, in soccer, we do not see that yet at the highest levels. In, uh, I'm in utter amazement. In tennis, for example, you know, the, those, 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 those ace shots that are the serves from the top players of the world, they exceed 100 miles an hour as well. There's no way that a human eye can see whether the ball has stayed in or not, for example, across the line. Well, they use video technology for that as well. In cricket, they use video technology as well. It seems to me that it's high time now for soccer, world football, the, the sport with the most spectators in the world. You know, why can't soccer do it? It seems like there's some sort of emphasis on tradition. Well, give me a break. What is tradition going to do for us? It's only going to, to continue to create heartaches and tr many tragedies going forward. I don't know about you, but I've just about had it with FIFA and the professional leagues for continuing to look the other way. It's almost becoming a joke. All the top players, coaches, and managers know that the officiating can be improved. But they don't do anything about it. They, every, it seems like every year goes by and they sit through you know, another series of mistakes, another series of mistakes. This is, this is becoming just totally ridiculous. Why don't, they, why don't the, the, the managers, the owners of the clubs, why don't they get together and have the guts to stand up and say something to FIFA? It's like, guys, what, we're tired of this officiating. This is primitive. This is like Neanderthal. Someday, spectators are going to joke with one another, or you can even imagine conversations someday where a little child is going to say to his dad, you know, Daddy, was this, was this great game that we saw from the World Cup 74 or 78, or, you know, was this great play? Was, did they have video replays in, the, in those days? Because that seemed like a controversial call, and it wasn't, you know, were, didn't they have video replays? And the dad's going to turn to his son and say something like, no, son, I'm sorry. In those days, they didn't have video technology. They just, you know, they, they had the technology, but they didn't implement it like other sports did. You know, is that something that we want to be able to say someday? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, that, 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 that players, fans, and coaches and have to live with these mistakes for eternity. It's not like, you know, why don't you get the call right within five minute time frame? And even if it takes like, you know, two commercial breaks to get to the right call, get to the right call. It's not like you have to live with it for eternity. That's the way it is today. We have to live with incorrect referee decisions. For the rest, you know, teams get knocked out of competitions. And well, how many times have you seen that? Time and time again. So what can we do about it? Well, as I suggested earlier, the teams, the managers, the owners of teams should get together, with the players even, if they want to join in, and talk to the league officials and say, let's start integrating video replays. It's about time. And I have a few suggestions that I'm going to put together in a subsequent video where I'm going to actually show you some practical ideas for how to actually integrate the technology. Because this is the solution, I believe, for the future. When you consider the multi-million of dollars that are being taken in by FIFA and by the clubs for, for playing in these competitions, the, the advertising revenue, the commercial revenue, that these teams are getting, players getting multi-millions of dollars, and they're not speaking up. I mean, I, you know, if I were a great player like Messi or Ronaldo or or whomever, I would stay. I would I would come to the plate after you know towards the end of my career or something at least, and say something like, you know, it's about time we really started to take a look at these video replays because it's really an injustice to the fans let alone the players. I thank you for, for watching this video. I hope you can voice your opinion about this subject. Let's get out of the Neanderthal era 
of officiating. Let's move to where we should be. It's 2012 here. We're not talking about the 1800s when the rules were first written. It's time to move on and to do the right thing. Thank you so much for listening. I, I hope you can check out some more of these ideas at ProSoccerTactics.com, and I hope you continue to enjoy the beautiful game. Thank you so much.